Hey there, Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go quick look product review. What we have this time is uh, always a unique, awesome line of knives. This is the Takeda Classic Series. And the reason I brought the box out is I um, I unbox and rebox a lot of knives as I do the video, so I get to deal with lots of different kinds of packaging. My least favorite is probably all the bubble wrap that's folded over and the, the boxes don't don't close unless you push down on them. Uh, I just really like their packaging. It looks cool, but what I really like about it is it's all, and again, this is me, Mr. Geeky, on unboxing and boxing a lot of knives, which most people don't do, but they've got this nice, very precisely cut foam on both sides to keep the knife and really, you know, cradle that knife well, and yet it's super easy to package and unpackage and put back. So uh, anyway, just thought I'd show you that, so I'll set this off to the side here. I know it's a it's a weird weird thing. Uh, okay, so this is the Takeda Classic, and it is the Algami Super Dunka. It's a 210 millimeter, so it's got a lot of length to it. Um, if you've not done too much research on the Takedas, they have a unique uh, characteristic on how they're made and the geometry and how the edges are ground uh, down to the edge. Um, so they're just quite a class unto themselves. They're they're excellent performers. Uh, they're just kind of unique in how they cut food, and they have kind of almost an hourglass shape to them where they thin out even more towards the middle, then they thicken up a little bit before the the grind down here, and then back down to the edge. So they have pretty good nonstick characteristics. Um, they are quite thin. Uh, they are very, very unique, and the classic line um, is all reactive, so it's soft iron and then uh, algami super reactive steel. Uh, on the inside on that three layer construction versus the NAS line which is stainless steel. The main difference besides of course the materials is the finish. So the the classic line has a much more kind of Nishiji pearskin type modeled finish. It's all going to be unique per knife whereas the stainless line has a much smoother kind of all black finish. So this has a Kuda Uchi or blacksmith kind of finish to them and they're all going to be quite unique. So it's a little bit, uh, I guess, more variety of texture than the stainless line. Uh, other than that, they're quite similar in thickness, performance, and so on. So it just kind of depends what you're interested in from that point of view and whether you want an all uh, you know, reactive knife or whether you want some stainless on it. The uh, heat treat that they typically do is around 62, so they don't take it super high, which is uh, makes it sharpen easier. It makes uh, it a little bit more forgiving than if they take it to like 64, something like that. So uh, Takeda-san, they've just always taken their Algami Super to a little bit lower heat treat. So again, makes it easier to sharpen, a little bit less edge retention, but it's also a little more forgiving. The construction on this is, as mentioned, uh, soft iron cladding on either side of that core steel for an all-reactive blade. The weight and dimensions can vary a bit from these, especially the dimensions. They don't use templates and such, so you know you can get a fair amount of variety uh, between knife to knife. So um, anyway, this particular one is 149 grams, or 5.2 ounces, and the edge length is about 218 uh, millimeters. Uh, the uh, about 8.6 inches on the edge. Again, these can vary. The overall length, about 14.2 inches. Spine thickness, again, I said they're thin, and they usually are. Uh, so this I got about 2.1 at the back, and I went down to 1.6 here, about halfway down. So it thins out really quite a bit. You do have a little bit of flex to these. That's just kind of their characteristic. And this one's tall, so about 62 and a half at the back, and about 61, about halfway down. And then, um, to me, this really doesn't look like rosewood, so I'll kind of reserve that. But according to the site, it's rosewood octagonal with ebony ferrule. To me, honestly, this looks like um, walnut and black packa wood. This does not look like ebony. So I'm going to say this is black packa wood and walnut. But, you know, so the handles do change over time. So, you know, this will be a little bit lighter handle than this rosewood ebony one would. Either way, it's got a nice fit and finish to it. It's octagonal, it's ambidextrous, about 74 millimeters circumference here, where I usually measure around. And then they always do a really good job of 
Let's see if I can bang the camera here. <laughs> a really good job of sealing up. They've got a, a clear sealant that's off the entire front of that. So these are uh, really actually professional friendly in that you know they, they moisture will not get in there. They seal these up extremely well. The balance point on this is going to be with that handle about right there. Again, this blade is tall all the way down. So brings your balance point forward, about right there. And then, of course, my pinch grip is going to be a little bit behind that. So you get it. it's a longer knife, right? So it's 210. So it's uh, going to have a little bit of length to it, and you can kind of feel that out there. But it's still, for the size of this blade, this thing, what is it, 5 ounces and such? So <laughs> this is really, really light. So really nice fit and finish on these. They do a remarkable job on these of the blacksmithing. Again, a continuous taper on the spine all the way down and then they've rounded off that they've done some finish work on the choil so it's comfortable out of the box edge these are very very sharp out of the box and what you're seeing here is a I still I believe they still use a true natural stone finish on this edge so they take this edge right down to the point in other words it's a zero grind there's not like an edge bevel on top of that so this is like one continuous edge right here at a very steep angle and this is what a natural stone finish looks like between the cladding and the core steel. And a true natural stone finish is just beautiful. It's subtle. It's just, it's not seen too often these days on a lot of knives. And uh, it's pretty darn cool. So, and I believe that is, it just has that look. So, the, uh, Blades are really straight. Uh, it's just they do, they do a really great job of smithing these knives. So um, let's see. I guess we need our beauty shot, don't we? This one's a little bit bigger. We'll do it this way. Yes, we'll do that. How's that? So if we take a close-up look on the left side of the blade, you've got the kind of usual. If I can try to cut myself here, the usual. Um, information they got and this says AS on it so you know it's Algami Super and this is Takeda's kind of standard stamping on here and then every knife's going to be unique so this is the kind of modeled uh, Nishiji finish on it here's the left side or the right side of the blade as you'd be holding it using it I'll just get a close-up here so you can get an idea of the texture you can definitely it's fairly smooth but you can feel it with your fingers they do just a really nice job, and as far as I know, I don't think there's any kind of lacquer on here. It's just a nice, smooth finish. So let's look at it on the cutting board. As you might guess, this is going to be pretty flat. So, actually, let me show you the tip here. So, again, the grind doesn't really start till the very end. So there's the tip, and then here's what the backside shot looks like. So these are known to have really good food separation. A lot of times you can cut stuff and it just stand, sits there in the same position. Um, again, the, the performance on these is quite unlike anything else, uh, but they've got a, you know, they've got a great reputation and some real, real followers uh, for good reasons. So here is the cutting board profile and you're going to see this is pretty darn flat. It is not going to rock a lot. It's not the point of this particular knife. Uh, the point is very, very low in relation to the knife center line, so it's almost like a long Nikiti, really, to be honest, but a little bit lighter. And um, so what you've got is just kind of a general light, low belly throughout the entire blade, and that's what it looks like. So not any true flat spot, but this should still chop really nicely. And uh, tip draws super easy. Are you going to rock with this? You could do it over low stuff, but not much. That's really not what this knife is about. So it'll do the other styles quite well. Chopping, push pull cutting, glide cutting, tip draws, those kind of things. <clears throat> so if you're looking for something unique, high performance, um, just different than everything else out there that's just a true... Uh, artisan crafted product and uh, again super light nimble uh, awesome steel just quite a unique piece so these are it so 
This is the Takeda Classic Algami Super Dunka 210mm knife.